Hello, hi. If you enjoy anything in this video, you should consider the following. Subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and on TikTok, where I make other forms of content and where I post my other content. All right, cool, enjoy the video. So massive wall of links coming right now. And this is yet another list of people that I enjoy. This is a list of people that I watch as frequently as I can. Um, with the semi exception of one person on this list, which I will get to when I get to them. But uh, going down the line, the first two guys, uh, Tendo and Arsenal, they do a lot of uh, tech and stuff. And as you know, I love me some good ass Tekken. You know, I, I, I was playing Tekken earlier when I got back from the gym. Because I, quite frankly, didn't really have the energy to do anything else. But I was playing some Tekken and I was watching. Uh, Tendo was live at the time, but I was watching Tendo. Well, watching slash listening to Tendo as I was playing Tekken, you know, figuring out more like crazy ass things I can do with Devil Jin because, well, that's been my Tekken main since five. Um, but they're great. They are hilarious. Um, our team makes a lot of, uh, meme ish Tekken videos. And, uh, he was, he was probably like the main guy I went to when it came like Tekken eight coverage before the full game came out. And then, uh, <clears throat> Tendo also makes a lot of Tekken videos, a lot of which are very, very entertaining. And, um, he, <laughs> he, uh, he recently did one of my favorite videos from him of like all time where, uh, he made a, he made a video specifically about Virgil, specifically, specifically Devil May Cry 5 Virgil. And it was called the Virgin Experience. I swear to God, genuine piece of art. That video, that shit was amazing. And like, I even showed it to people who didn't really fuck with Devil May Cry, and it was like, "Yo, this shit is awesome." And I put I put people on Tendo because he's just oh, fucking hilarious. And I even put people onto onto our subtlety who didn't really like play Tekken for real, for real, but they watched a lot of like tournaments and videos and stuff. And I see people like, like looking for Mimi ish, uh, Tekken stuff. And, you know, funny, funny ish, like Tekken videos and like, Oh, watch this guy. He does that shit real good and all that and also 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 um as i am discussing these creators uh please follow them please subscribe to them on youtube uh etc 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 you know the drill you know same thing as last time go 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 watch and engage with their stuff um but moving down the list we have we have the homie Yuki. I have no idea if they're watching right now, but Yuki's fucking cool. She's great. She's an artist. Does really good art. Is a really like enjoyable person to talk to. High key. Uh, they also stream. They they are a black VTuber. Um, one of the not not one of the first black vtubers that i started watching but one of the ones that you know is time permitting i watch on a very very frequent basis uh most of the time i do wind up like lurking in the chat but other times i do like chat and stream because why the fuck not you know um i've done some excuse me shit I've done some um, TikTok YouTube short commission work for them, and they were very appreciative. Um, Yuki also does uh, not 
um, not really often because Yuki has her own things going on in the world, but uh, Yuki is no stranger to a commission, and so if you would want something from them, well, you know the drill, follow them, interact with them, and then be like, hey, yo, I got some free coin, and I kind of want to commission you for something, something, you know? They're really cool, really cool. They, they, they too, are also a founding member of uh, the Melina Mafia uh, VTuber group, uh, alongside myself, and they always have some pretty some pretty insightful ideas and recommendations for events and things of that matter. And, and, uh, I suppose, uh, content spoiler for the future. Uh, when I get back to, and not to say that it hasn't been happening on a regular basis, but when I get my live like stream version of my uh final fantasy D, D homebrew stuff set up and ready to go they will be a player in it so look forward to that uh moving down the list we have the dragon queen herself blaze at midnight uh i i could jesus christ i could probably make like an entire fucking uh, probably 40 minute minimum like video about them as a creative and as a person and yeah because they too are one of the first black vtubers that i found and like i again again time permitting and you know I, if i don't have any prior engagements uh, was like immediately um, one of the first people that I began watching on a regular basis and I was around as early not as early but like when Blaze still had their their, uh, their 1.0 model not the one that they have now that's that's how long I've known of Blaze, and that's how long I've been watching them. Uh, Blaze does a lot, lot of stuff. Um, right now, uh, Blaze is doing a a series of hmm. <clears throat> I don't want to just label them as interview streams, but. It is a combination of having guests on stream and sharing them with her audience and being like, yo, these are other black creators. Um, this is what they do. We're going to get to know them, talk, talk with them, play some games with them, etc., etc." And the, 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 the series, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> the series is called Uppies for Beauties and Baddies. And I... I'm gonna be saying this a lot, and I've been saying this a lot so far, but time permitting, I have, I watched the VOD for the first one, and I was able to watch slash listen to the stream for the second one, and I am very patiently no no let me not lie i am like painstakingly waiting for the next one <laughs> to go live so i can watch that uh but they they do they do a lot of things a lot of things a lot of things a lot of things they are also they're also a part of uh, black girl gamer code which if you're not assuming you don't already know of or engage with them in any way shape or form if you don't know of them go follow them go watch them go engage with them they are doing things that should have been done a long time ago when it comes to black women in creative spaces but they are doing what is necessary and i love it and i support it a hundred fucking percent well add on like 
about 20 extra zeros to that. But you, 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 you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know, go engage with, genuinely engage with, and show them the love that they need for what they're doing. <clears throat> and, 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 um, Blaze is also a part of, uh, the Team Blackout group. And, not to, hmm, I need to be very careful what I say here, but, when the founding members were doing our selection process, I'll say, it was pretty much like an instant unanimous agreement to have Blaze be part of Team Blackout. Just, just, just dead ass. Like it was immediate. <laughs> Damn near instantaneously, type of thing, you know. But again, Blaze is an amazing person, lovely person. Please, I am. I implore you, watch and engage her content too. <clears throat> now taking a sip of water real quick. <clears throat> Alright, next down the line is the man himself, Kishin Shinobi, when most people just call him Kishin. He too is a very, very cool guy. Very suave man, if I will say so myself. Um, I've also known of, of him for a long time. Uh, I found him back when he was using his, uh, his older, uh, 3D model. And I was, oh shit, I forgot to mention, I was, I was present for Blaze's 2.0 debut, and I was also present for Kishin's live 2D, uh, debut, and those were very, very fun streams, I, it was kind of like, you know how people get excited over, like, Smash character reveals, it kind of felt like that, like, like, I, I don't, watch very many um VTuber debuts or whatever but those two were among some of like the most fun streams I've ever watched period type shit you know like like I was fucking laughing and hee hee and, and ha ha and, and I had snacks and shit. It was like being at a party, pretty much. That that that's how they felt to me. And if I could be there present again as a viewer, goddamn it, I'll do it again and again and again. Um, but he he is a variety streamer. He streams quite often. Um, pretty much like hell. Anything you think of. He'll play it. So like, uh, the last the last stream that I was able to catch from him, he was playing Persona Three Reload, and that was a pretty fun time. Um, I was pretty much there for like every single one of his Final Fantasy Sixteen streams. I was present when he was playing Spider Man Two. Um, but. He has, he has a good energy, really good energy, actually. Um, very, very entertaining. There's never, there's never a dull moment watching Keishin, and, uh, he occasionally, uh, does a thing called, uh, Wuss Wednesdays, because he's not really a big fan of, like, horror games and stuff, but he'll play them. And the level of fear shown on screen is quite entertaining for me. Not so much him, probably. <laughs> but again, he's another person, another black creative that should 
be watched that needs to be watched. And... Ah, uh, fuck, I was gonna say something and I lost my train of thought. God... Damn it. Anyway. Uh, moving down the list once again. We have RDC World. And... Hmm... They have been making stuff for a long, 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 long time. And... For me personally, I don't usually tend to watch uh, YouTube skits or anything like that. But the first one that I saw from them, I was already sold like right then and there. I was like, yo, these dudes are hilarious. They're a bunch of a bunch of nerds, a bunch of anime enjoyers, a bunch of video game enjoyers. Like, they, they got this series called Anime House and Video Game House and stuff like that, and... Like, when, when, I, when I say that they are genuinely fucking hilarious to the point where usually, like, every video they put out, I find myself, like, laughing in tears type hilarious, that's how goddamn funny they are. And they stream, too. Um, they, they have, uh, six million, I think, like, almost 6.2 million on YouTube, but I found, I, I found RDC World before they were at a million subscribers, just to put into perspective how long I've been watching them, and stuff like that, and they stream on Twitch, I'm pretty sure the Twitch name is uh, RDC Gaming, but those streams are entertaining, very funny, especially when they're playing games with each other and they tend to get like riled up and whatever. Funniest shit ever. Um, but they were. Hold on, let let me let me let me let me preface. What I'm about to say with, I don't usually receive external inspiration very well, which is hilarious given what I said earlier. But when it comes to like, when it comes to like, uh, you know, you got this, you're trying to hype me up and whatever, like, I'll hear it, but I won't. I won't feel it if 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 you get what I'm saying and like not to say that I'm not grateful for when people try to hype me up and whatever but it's just it's it's just something weird in my brain okay but watching them that like gave me like a real kick in the ass when it came to inspiration and motivation to really buckle down and do what I'm doing now, pretty much. Like, had I not watched them as often as I did, it probably would have taken me a bit longer to do and be serious about what I'm doing and I can really attribute that I can I can like genuinely really really attribute that to them um and uh they they they've even gotten popular enough to where they have their own convention called DreamCon and I really 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 want to go one year I just don't know when that's going to be but god damn it, I'm going to go to DreamCon at least one time before I before I fucking croak, you know? Um moving down, we have the god who most people who've been keeping up with like like uh um um um, um the YouTube rap scene like ciphers or whatever, 
Uh, he goes, he, well, he still goes by Shizzy, but he was one of the first guys that I found that like, as a, as a, as a, as a, as an independent, that's the word I was looking for, as an independent music guy, like really doing his shit and being about it for real, for real, like, like he said plenty of times before that he takes that rap shit seriously. And as someone that really only recently started listening to rap, and again, not not mainstream rap, but independent rap, I'll say. More frequently anyway. I, 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 I had like, like a whole playlist of his stuff and I probably still have it somewhere, but I had like a whole playlist of his shit and anytime he dropped like something new, I just, I, I would stop like anything, everything I was doing just to listen to it, just to watch the music video, just to be engaged with it, damn it, because the shit was good. It was fucking good. And, uh, he's... He, he, he's been doing the VTubing thing for a while. And my favorite thing about him is that he does not like hold his tongue or restrict his thoughts about like anything. And so like whenever some fuck shit happens, uh, in a community, like someone being obtuse or obscene or just fucking racist, like most people in the community were being a few weeks ago, he'll be the first one to like, not necessarily, um, call you out on it, but to like clown you for it too. And, 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 and clown a motherfucker for some dumb shit he will do. And you will be made to, like, a big fat fucking fool. Uh, you know, should you fall in the crosshairs and all that. But, he's cool. Watch him. I heavily, heavily implore that you watch him. Uh, on a... Excuse me. But yeah, he's cool. Uh, going down the list again. I have linked the Twitter of a man named uh, B. Dave Walters, and he is a very, very prominent and popular uh, black man in the tabletop scene and you know that encompasses dungeons and dragons and uh stuff like vampire the masquerade which was how i found him by the way and he's like the main character in a bunch of shows a bunch of tabletop shows and media that i engage with and i've been I've been watching stuff that he's involved in for so long that even if he's not like the prominent figure or the main character, if his name is in it or he's involved in it in any kind of way, I'm going to fucking watch it. Even if, even if I may not be feeling it from like minute one to whenever the thing ends, just because his name is attached to it, I'm going to watch it through and through no matter what and you know bonus points if he is involved and if he is a character even if he's the main character or whatever the fuck seeing him on screen makes me very happy <laughs> seeing his involvement in a project makes me very happy and um when I found him it was through an ex a friend of mine uh who was and, and he hit me up he was like yo dude i know you've been like uh getting super into like tabletop stuff recently uh there's this there's this show on twitch called uh, vampire the masquerade that you might like because i know you played the the fucking the the, the game of vampire masquerade bloodlines which at some point on Twitch, I will be playing 
granted with a lot of mods to make the game fucking functional, but anyway, um, yeah, he put me onto the show, and, and, and it, it is called Vampire the Masquerade, LA by Night, that shit is great, it, 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 it's been running for quite some time, um, uh, there was a point in time where I, like, wasn't able to watch the show, so, I kind of fell off, and I'm, I'm playing catch-up, but, it's like, like, it is, you know how people have their shows, like, uh, what, what the fuck do people watch these days, like, uh, like, Power and Shameless and whatever the fuck, like, drama as drama shows that that vampire the masquerade la by night that's my shit that is my equivalent for it and it's not like like it is live action because it's streamed on twitch but it's not like you know like uh um um, um like fighting or this is now like special effects or whatever no it is just it's like it's like critical role in the way that it is presented you know, it it is a tabletop show that you watch on stream and it's very very engaging you know like because you know sometimes someone might like fuck up a dice roll and something might go horribly wrong so they might go really really good but it's the way that all of the characters interact and the way that things are presented and the way that the characters help drive the story that has me so deeply, deeply engaged with it. And then again, B. Dave, he, he plays Victor Temple in uh, L.A. by Night. And I'm not going to hold you. The raw fact that a black man is the main character in my, well, not, not even my opinion, that's just how it is, the main character in a live tabletop show where that tends to not happen very frequently, as much as, as frequently as I would like it to be, that means a hell of a lot to me, a hell of a lot to me, and it was through watching the show and watching him and seeing how a character can be played that also inspired me not just to make my own um tabletop homebrew thing but it inspired a lot of the characters that i have played in tabletop games over the years like there bit bits and pieces of the characters that B. Dave Walters plays, I've incorporated them into many characters that I have played, into many NPCs that are in my Final Fantasy homebrew game. And and again, I, I, I cannot I cannot stress enough. Him being the main character means so fucking much. Because it's like, damn, I could be that one day. Other people could be in his position one day. That's really, really, really fucking nice. Uh, and, I, and, 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 and I like that a lot. And, you know, just, just, just like with RDC World, had I not... Had I not, like, actually sat down and watched the show and engaged with it and, like, talked about it with people and, you know, not been so appreciative of the fact of who the main character is, I, my Final Fantasy homebrew thing probably wouldn't exist. Just straight up, it probably would not exist. Now... You know, with 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 me being the DM <coughs> and all that, and not necessarily 
being on screen for the version of it that is on YouTube, I, I don't know of that many, like, like, black DMs, dungeon masters, or storytellers, or whatever, that do stuff like that, like, I don't, I know of my people that play Dungeons and Dragons and engage with it, but as far as, like, you know, being prominent on screen and, like, running the show, I don't know that many, in my personal life, anyway, but, that is another point of inspiration that means a hell of a lot to me as a person and 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 I am very happy that he exists and that he does what he does and he does it very very well Okay, I'm taking a sip of my water. <sighs> Going down the list yet again, we have uh, Lozora, Bandit Dog, Bandit VTuber. I found her back when... I was streaming Octopath 1, so that's, ooh, quite a few years back at this point. Um, and I was looking for other people that were playing Octopath 1 to, like, raid into, and I swear to God, like, back then, she was the only other person, like, playing it, and... Uh, I believe they were playing, uh, the demo for it, <coughs> or like, um, yeah, yeah, because Octopath 1 is only on Switch and Steam, so they were playing the, the Switch demo for it, and I, I tabbed in on my phone for a quick moment I was like oh my god I love the model I love the voice fellow octopath enjoyer raid just like that and again time permitting and other things involved when they are live I do watch them when I can now I might lurk well actually no I, I just lurk really um but I do watch them. You know, they're very entertaining. Um, hmm. Zora's general energy on stream is like... Has a tendency to be all over the place. But it is very entertaining in how all over the place that it is. And... Sometimes they talk about things in a way where... Like, I find myself stuck between, like, how hard I want to laugh kind of thing. And it's not to say that some jokes hit and some jokes don't hit. It's just that Zora's fucking hilarious. And it's like, huh, maybe I should, like, breathe in between laughing, you know? <laughs> And she too is another a uh, 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 black woman VTuber that, if you aren't already watching them, you should be watching them. And when when Zora streams, and that goes for like everybody on the list, when Zora streams, their streams are very very entertaining. And it's like, should I find myself like not having a particularly good time, or whatever, whatever? Again, time permitting, if she's live, we just open up the stream, and by the time stream ends, I'm feeling better in one way or another, you know? And, quick side note, uh, everybody should have some kind of, uh, 
streamer or YouTuber or whatever that they can watch that can fix their day should they happen to be having a bad one. And so, again, again, you know, as, as I've been saying, as I've been talking about these, these particular people, if you are not already following them or engaging with their content, please do so. Please, please do so. Uh, you will not. I mean, you, you are missing out because you're not already engaged with them now, but, uh, you, you, you're going to be missing out and you don't want to miss out. You know, FOMO is a bitch and a half. And last but damn sure not least on the list is uh, the homie Toledo. Now, Toledo primarily does YouTube videos and they are funny commentary videos. But my man's came not crashing but like like fucking barreling onto the scene with uh with their videos like what it's like to be a black vtuber and it was just like yo he hit the nail on the head so many fucking times in a very short amount of time, and it's like, yo, yo, this motherfucker's going places. I, I see it. I feel it. He's cooking. He's fucking going places. And, 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 and every single video that, that's leading. Every single video that Toledo puts out, banger after banger after banger. And I really, really enjoy his editing style. I I don't necessarily like to put labels on people when it comes to their stuff, but Toledo's editing style is fast paced. It, no, it, it, it's, it's fast paced and digestible because some people are fast paced editing style and not digestible by any goddamn means, but Toledo's editing style is great. And it's the kind of fast pace where it's not obnoxious. And when a joke is inserted, the joke works and the joke fits and it makes sense. And it was shit. If you ask me, Toledo is like, like a mastercraft in what he does in particular. And I would, I would love if, if even just for one time, Toledo would like, you know, surprise it by like an editing stream or something that would make my fucking day just so I can see like how his brain works behind the scenes because you can kind of get an idea like when you're watching someone's video but when you're watching the editing process that's the part that's like oh okay I I see how you work now and I appreciate it even more than I did before type of thing but yeah Toledo primarily does YouTube stuff um usually puts out a video like once a week and you can tell that there's a lot of time and a lot of care put into those YouTube videos 